Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I just wanted to uh, briefly touch upon the security for developer cheat sheet. Uh, so as you can see that I'm in a trailhead and uh, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the options available as a part of the, the cheat sheet. And I believe it's it's very important for you guys to understand because you know in platform developer two, uh, not just from a certification point of view, right? I'm informed, uh, but from a real developer and experience point of view, right? You should know when to use certain options and what's the limitations of it and why not to use it, right? So, um, so this is pretty straightforward, right? So you go to this, you know, prepare for your Salesforce platform uh, developer to credentials. Um, I'll put the link in the description below if you wanted to know more, right? So you go here, it takes you here, right? So, you know, as you can see, uh, this is just like a cheat sheet. Uh, talks about with sharing, without sharing. I presume you already know what this with sharing. So if you're using with sharing, right? So the security rules won't be enforced for the current user. So which is the default option. So if you if you explicitly specify your class as you know public with sharing, then the security, uh, then sorry, then the sharing rules will come into picture, right? So that's one of the thing. Uh, you should know. I mean, if you haven't done so, I would highly encourage you to read more about it. It's important uh, from a developer perspective. Uh, sorry, development perspective. And if you have done platform developer one, you should already know this concept, right? If not, um, I would suggest it's the right time to dig into it, right? Okay, now that's one of the aspects of it. Um, then they talk about, you know, the CRUD operation on an object. So this is, uh, this operation, right, it's creatable. Um, so it actually used to determine uh, if a current user has a right to create uh, an object or, or whether the current user has a right to access the object or they can update it or they can delete it, right? So this is something you can uh, test it using the, the describe method. That's one of the reasons why I taught you guys about the schema describe, right? So the way you can test it is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll just show you dummy code. Okay, so the, look at the first line, right? So what I'm doing, I'm just looking at an account object, right? Just to see if the current user uh, has a creatable, act, creatable rights, right? So this is how you write a code. Uh, account dot s object dot get describe right so this is like it get uh, describe s object result and then there is an option called is creatable similarly you can do is accessible or updatable or you know so this is very handy uh, when you are uh, developing a framework or a generic framework you know you can do that um, or if you wanted to make sure that you know the the, the current context user will have access to it um, I haven't used this much. In, in most of the scenario, I've used uh, here and there, um, and I haven't seen much code getting used, but you know, just for the sake of understanding, it's important for you guys to know that there is a feature something like this in an Apex, which you can make use of it in case if you have to, right? If you're building a generic framework, you might need to take into consideration this option. Right, so that's around, uh, um, you know, the credit operation, then you can go the same for, uh, you know, the field level security for if you wanted to make sure whether the user have access to the field, whether they can create a field, you know, something like that. But, that, you know, mostly you can say if the field can be updatable, right? So, for instance, this is a code, right? So, you know, I'm looking at an account name field and just using the get describe uh, method. And inside that, there is something called is accessible, just to say whether the current user uh, has access to this field or they, whether they can update it, right? So you can use this approach to test it. Um, that being said, right, I haven't used this much. Uh, I haven't, because the reason why I haven't used it, I don't, I haven't encountered a scenario where I have to use it. I mean, uh, much, right? I have used it in a couple of places, uh, but not uh, very often. Yeah. Okay. So that's you know pretty simple. Then you can look at the is API function, right? You got is authorized to view, right? And then you have SFDC encoded classes, right? And then custom settings. You can you know you can check all this option for the custom settings. Get instance, get value. That's uh, pretty basic, right? I'm pretty sure you guys already know. Um, 
and then your visual force escaping function um visual force you know has been out in the market for years and years right so i'm pretty sure that you know you guys if, you, if you've been working on sales for space for a long time you would know this right if you're some if you are new to sales for space uh the the advantage of not knowing visual force um i would say it's not i mean can we say that you're you're on a you're on a safer side right because most of the new projects right they are not using visual force and they're mostly stick you know going to lwc uh, unless you know there is something which you can't do using visual force uh using lwc right so in that case uh visual force can be an important aspect i would say uh on salesforce space but that being said right for any new development i prefer not to use uh visual force right uh, because it's good time to upskill. Why to work on a legacy technology, which anyway are going to end, right? It's the same like with the process builder and workflow, right? Salesforce not going to support it after a certain time, right? So what's the point of investing your the resource energy, uh, you know, building on a, and a technology which is going to be outdated anyways, right? But that being said, right, you might have Visual Force project in place, so you might want to use it. Yeah, go for it. But it's always a good option to migrate to LWC, right? If that's possible. Then you have ESAPI functions, right? Then crypto clouds, crypto if you you know, encrypt, decrypt, right? If you if you're after you know cryptography, then you know the Salesforce has out of box option. Um so yeah, it's pretty awesome. Right, so this is pretty much what I wanted to talk about, guys, today. Um I hope you enjoyed it. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's just like a developer cheat sheet. You know, you might find it useful, right, in your day-to-day -day development uh, life cycle, right? That's how I call the developer stay as a developer life cycle. You know, start with 8 a.m. in the morning, end at 5, you know, get to work on different aspects of Salesforce, right? So you might find this information useful, right? And from an exam point of view, yeah, you might get asked here and there, right? So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Take care. Adios.